For 15 years, Putin's proved that he was willing to do whatever was necessary to stop NATO from coming anywhere near his border. He's made slow advances towards Ukraine over the years to try to prevent NATO from advancing there. So what could have been done to avoid getting to this point? You heard the last interview. Let's ask Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis, a military analyst and a senior fellow at Defense Priorities. All right, so what's your response to Senator Lindsey Graham? Well, with all due respect, the senator is just dead wrong on nearly everything he said. I, I mean, I just got to be honest. The, the first thing that Putin has been saying unequivocally for 15 years, that NATO on his border in Ukraine is a red line. And he's never said anything besides that. And even if he may want to take other countries and rebuild the Soviet Union, he doesn't have the force capacity to do that. And if anyone had any doubts about it, his performance so far against a, a, a an uh, infantry-bound country that only didn't even have an army eight years ago and he could barely uh, advance against it, he would have no chance against the 30-member bloc of NATO if he went one inch into a NATO country, and he knows that. But he does desperately want this border, no matter what anybody wants to think, he is clear on that, and, and he needs that uh, uh, the boundary in between, the, the buffer, and that's what Ukraine, that's why he's, Putin has said he is willing to negotiate. If they'll declare neutrality, he'll withdraw his forces. And right now, that's probably the only thing that's gonna keep the Ukrainian people, more people from dying. Do you think Zelensky should negotiate and work out a deal with Vlad and say, we're neutral, we're not going to join NATO or maybe save some lives? Or do you think he's just hell bent on protecting every inch of his country and he's never, ever, ever going to sacrifice any land to Putin? Well, look, I mean, as the president of any country that's been invaded, you can certainly understand why he would be fierce in his defense and not want to give up anything. But at some point, you have to recognize just the combat realities and the amount of power that Putin has on the ground in his country. He's not going to be able to prevent it from coming up, especially because no one's coming to his aid. So if you can realize that if the longer time goes, the more of your people are going to die. And eventually you may have to make a deal under pressure on your capital city. It might make sense to do it now while you have a little bit of room to negotiate. Yeah, they're going to surround that city and then lay siege to it. Hopefully he can hold on. But that's going to get ugly once that happens. What do you think about the polls forcing our hand with these fighter jets? Do you think it's possible that Biden could get roped into throwing up a no-fly zone? And do you think a no-fly well, zone is, is out of the question? It, it should be out of the question. It, should be, it shouldn't even be on the table for discussion. It should be point blank no, because the possibility of putting American pilots in the air to either be shot down by Russian MiGs or to have to shoot down Russian MiGs or to destroy their ground surface to air missiles, that would almost immediately trigger Article 5 and we're in a war. Okay. So that should immediately just quell any thought of that. So definitely not. And in terms of these MiG fighters, look, we got to be honest, that's not going to make any difference because Ukraine has aircraft right now. They can't get them in the air because of the Russian ADA, uh, air defense capabilities. Bringing in some more will just add to the target list if they do, and it's just not going to make enough difference. Oh, that's interesting. All right. Thank you so much. That was really enlightening. We really appreciate you coming on.